Now here's a statement I probably wouldn't have said about 15 years ago. I'm really starting to like the brand Hyundai. And for good reason, I believe. Firstly, they've got a really strong motorsport arm, the N division. They've also got their WRC, their rally arm, which is really cool. And that, of course, is now being translated through to their road cars on things like the i30N and the i20N hot hatch coupes. Brilliant road cars, brilliant to use every day as a road car, but also when you want it to be a hot hatch hooligan, they're brilliant at being those as well. And then if you look at the other end of the spectrum, there's the cars that just exist as cars that aren't really trying to be anything more than a car. Think i20, i30, i10, just the little runarounds, the kind of thing that nobody needs to shout about. They just get the job done. They exist and therefore the brand's brilliant for that as well. But then there's also a third arm, something that makes it even more brilliant in my opinion, and that is the futuristic stuff, the EVs, stuff like this. This is the Hyundai Ioniq 6. My name is John Marco, you're watching Driven, and let's have a quick look around this car. Now, this isn't going to be a full review. Good reason for that. We've been very limited on days that we've been able to film with this. We've had the car for a week and that big ball of fire in the sky there. Well, that's the first time we've seen it in this week. So sadly, we're not going to do a big feature. However, there will be a written review at driven.site. So if you want to get all the nitty gritty ins and outs, the finer details, all the little specifics and what's the word I'm looking for? Specifics, specifics. Yeah, that stuff. If you want to see all that stuff, head on over to the website. I'll tell you all about it there. In the meantime, I thought what we'd do as we've got a bit of sunshine and the car, we'd wheel out the cameras and Luke to do some filming and show you this fabulous car. Now, I sincerely hope that nobody gets the wrong end of the stick with my 15 years ago comment, because I think it is valid. Let's cast our minds back if we do, and let's put ourselves in the position of us wanting to buy a medium-sized family car. Something like a 3 Series BMW would probably be fairly high up on the list of cars we'd want to buy and cars we'd want to brag about down at the pub. But if we couldn't afford, let's say, a 3 Series BMW, then we might be looking over to the Japanese market, something equally sized, maybe not as posh, but considerably less money. And then if we looked at that and thought, oh, actually, that's a bit steep as well, we'd probably look towards South Korea and something with a Hyundai badge. And there'd be nothing wrong with that. Hyundais have always been good cars, but they've not been cars that you perhaps would then rush to the pub and go, guys, 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 come out and look at this. But now things have changed and quite dramatically. And the price gap has also closed, but for good reason, because Hyundai now are producing quite wonderful things. And this, this Ionic 6, I believe is one of those wonderful things. Also 15 years ago, Hyundai weren't at the forefront of styling. And I think that's kind, that's fair. Photographed here. Nowadays though, I mean, look at this. I'm not gonna go as far as saying this is a pretty car. However, I do think it's quite cool. It's certainly very interesting to look at. Lots of different angles do catch your eye. Front and rear quarters, for example, are really cool. And this was based on a spectacularly cool concept. Photograph of that here. And yes, you can tell, whilst it's not quite as amazing as that concept, this is carrying over some quite cool things. And we have to remember, it's an evolving brand. So what are the next models gonna look like? Well, they're gonna be even cooler than this. And inside, well, it's pretty good in there. And it is packed full of gadgets. We like gadgets, so um, let's get in. We'll start in the back for good reason. I'll show you why. I'm going to open this window for a bit more light. But look at this space. Now, perhaps no secret, the Ionic 6 shares its chassis with the Ionic 5, which is a big car inside. This one, equally big in the back, you've got loads of legroom. Look at that knee space there. That driver's seat, which is only a couple of inches further back than this passenger seat, that's in my driving position. 
and you can see how much room there is. There is, of course, a big sweep through. You've got loads of room. The seat itself, very comfortable, and it's heated. Both back seats here are heated. You've got absolutely loads of creature comforts back here, of course, as you would expect. Armrest, cup holders, and loads of pockets to put things like a mobile phone. You can go in there, or in there, or down there or even down there or in here. You've got two USB-C charging sockets back here. That's very handy for keeping said phone charged and generally speaking, nice place to be. Some people have said, well, with that sloping roof, maybe the space in the back might be a bit constricted. I'm six foot one, 185-ish centimeters. Not too bad for me. Yes, I can feel it, but let's be honest. If you're sat in here and you want to be comfortable, you're going to shuffle your bum forward a bit. You're going to sit back, relax. This is nice. Nice place to be. Up front, loads of room, loads of storage, loads of gadgets. I shall talk about them all now. Look at this for an interior on what was 15 years ago probably not a car renowned for having beautiful interiors. This looks fantastic. Big, beautiful Bose sound system speaker panels here. I really like this kind of ribbed, plasticky feel. At a glance, you might think, oh, hang on, that looks a bit cheap, but it, it, it's not. It kind of works. It's quite nice. And then throughout the car, you've got ambient lighting. So at the moment, we're in eco mode. That gives you a kind of, oh, no, we're not. We're in normal mode. That gives you a blue lighting if you go to eco that lighting goes green if you go into sports mode it goes red as you might expect and it's just generally quite a cool environment to be in this is as spec goes it's called the ultimate spec and this is the rear wheel drive configuration of the ionic 6 i'll explain what the complete comprehensive details are between the rear wheel drive ultimate spec and the all-wheel drive ultimate spec and the first edition spec. I'll put all that in the written article, but essentially I picked this one, the rear wheel drive one, because this one has the highest range. They claim, Hyundai, that this will do potentially 338 miles on one charge. Pretty impressive. And I have to say, I've been sedately driving this around over the past few days. I have given it a full charge and I have been given following the learning of my driving style, a predicted range of 299 miles on a full charge. And that's pretty good, especially when you consider that it is getting into winter, it's a little bit colder, I'm using things like heated seats and windscreen wipers and air conditioning. This thing's even got a dehumidifier, can you believe? Um, so all of that's going to deplete the overall range slightly, but 300 miles on a full charge, that's the kind of thing we need to be seeing in an EV to make the masses want to buy one. Now, beyond that lovely uh, practicality part, there's loads of really nice features and gadgets in here, and it's really nicely lit. As I, as I say about the ambient lighting, that's nice. But even on the steering wheel boss here, we've got four little cubes, very little mention of Hyundai at all in here. But these little four dots, these illuminate according to both the driving mode, but also whilst you're charging, they will flash to reflect how much charge you're putting in, a bit like if you charged a power pack for your mobile phone. Quite a handy little reference point just there. You've got these beautiful big screens, all touch screen, as you would imagine. So you swipe across to all the different bits and pieces. You've got lots of lovely, easy features on here. A good mixture of physical buttons, buttons you can press and touch screen buttons here. Uh, you've got things like quiet mode. You can hit that so that if you've got little ones sleeping in the back or perhaps some slightly hungover friends, they can quietly sleep in the back. The audio volume is dipped, the lighting is dimmed, and up front the audio is reduced ever so slightly so you as the driver can still enjoy listening to your favourite podcast. We're available on all good pod podcast streaming platforms, easy for me to say. Um, and everyone in the back can sit quietly and sleep. Uh, as you would expect, it's got things like built-in navigation, it's got wireless charging, you've got loads of storage, a bit like in the back, except more up here. So you've got big door bins, you've got more storage here, you've got the cup holders, you've got a little cubby hole, you've got a massive amount of space back here. You've got not a glove box, but a glove tray that slides out and then loads of creature comforts, things like heated seats, heated steering wheel, driver assists, things like lane departure, steering assist, brake assist. Uh, the car will recognize speed limits if you're driving along on the motorway. It will also recognize if you're going through temporary roadworks, including 
average speed cameras. And if you've got the cruise control on with the radar on, it will adjust the cruise control to match the speed of the average speed camera. So you don't have to faff around worrying about speeding up, slowing down or twisting and twiddling knobs on here. It does it all. Fabulous, absolutely fabulous thing. It is, however, not perfect. A couple of little gremlins and a couple of slight annoyances with that system. I'll explain more about that in a little bit, but in the meantime, some more of the practicalities. You've got just over 400 litres of storage, big boot at the back, and even a little bit of storage under the bonnet there as well. Practical, big, comfortable, luxurious, full of tech. What's there not to like? Did I tell you the price? I don't think I have. This thing, just under 50 grand, you can get one of these for. That's not too bad. When you're considering other cars in the market with a similar tech, this, as Hyundai always has been, is quite good value. Okay, we're going to end with a very short drive. It's going to be a drive on a very average English road. There are a couple more features that I haven't yet mentioned. Things like double glazed windows. Can you imagine double glazed windows on a Hyundai? And also things like driving at night. This thing does the really clever cut out automated main beam assist so that if cars are coming the other way, they get cut out without being blinded whilst still illuminating the rest of the road. But I thought I'd end with the slight annoyances with this car. And if I just turn it on, the game will begin. And the game we're going to play is how many beeps and bongs can we hear whilst driving along? There's four, five, six. You can see where we're going with this. Right, we're on. Now, it's going to bing. I've already selected the gear, so that's good. And then what we'll do as we set off is it will bing again. That's to tell me that the speed limit on this road is 10 miles an hour. It knows that because it read a sign earlier and hasn't seen another sign since. Now that's fine. It's informative, that's helpful. Until you go over the speed limit and it starts to bong. And it bongs four times. Two, three, four. And it will continue to bong each and every time you go over that speed limit. Now here, we're about to join a main road, but before we do, there's a sign that says five miles an hour. Luckily, it didn't read that, because if it had done, it would have pinged. But now we are on, very clearly, a 60 mile per hour road. It's just pinged to tell me that, so away we go. And what I'll do is I'll turn on my assisted cruise and my lane departure system. The cruise will set to 60, of course, with a ping. And this bit's easy. Until, of course, you go over the speed limit ever so slightly by even one mile an hour. Well, that's interesting. It's now stopped binging. <laughs> Why? Why have you done that? It's almost as if it knows. Oh, no, it hasn't. There it goes. And the other thing that is a little bit annoying with the assists is that it doesn't always get it quite right. For example, if you're driving along on a 60 or 70 mile an hour dual carriageway and you overtake a van that's limited to 60, the cameras in the car will detect that 60 mile per hour sign and then assume that that's the limit. And it can do one of two things there. The less inconvenient thing is additional bongs. It will do that quite happily. Uh, the other one is if you've got the cruise control set to automatic adjustment of the speed limit, the car will actually start slowing itself down, thinking that it's on a 60 mile per hour road when it's not. That isn't only just a little bit annoying, but it's actually also potentially a bit dangerous in my opinion. Now you can turn all of that off, which is fine, as you can do with the bongs and the pings and the bings and all that sort of stuff. You can turn it off. However, 
The really annoying bit is when you then turn the car off, get out, go and do what you've got to do, and then get back in, regardless of how long or short you do so, it all resets again. And as far as I can work out, there isn't a way to turn it off and keep it off, either by saving yourself as a driver profile or setting up a new driver profile. It just always comes back on and it does get a teensy tiny little bit infuriating. <sighs> Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. As I say, just a brief review on this one. We haven't been blessed by the gods of weather. So we were at victim of picking the one sunny day we had in the week, but rest assured, there will be a full written review on the website, driven.site. Head on over and have a look. You'll see there a review on this, as well as a comprehensive collection of other reviews on other cars, everything from supercars and hypercars to your everyday runaround EVs, driven.site. There you will also see our entire back catalogue of videos and, of course, links through to our podcast. That's perhaps what we are most famous for. So have a look at the podcast tab. You'll see every single episode we've ever recorded, mostly with very interesting people every single week. For now, I'll say thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you're joining us for the first time, hit the subscribe button and the little bell to remind you of our next upload. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.